Hi gents. I believe it's a time for some kind of practical video uh, because otherwise you may think this guy is just talking while not doing anything. Okay, let's dissolve some gold, purify it and uh, finally bring it back to metallic state or in other words to precipitate it. What you can see is a really small and tiny flask and inside uh, there is one gold bullion I melted myself it's really far from being pure gold, but really dirty alloy. This particular bullion uh, was made after etching uh, quite a lot of different contacts. And thanks to that, now I'm able to purify gold using 100 ml flask, not a 5 liter flask. Also, I put inside one watch case. I'm not certain if this is actually golden case, because it's not hallmarked. Uh, but it looks like a 9 carat gold to me. Uh, so yes, um, what I will make, I will make Puaman's Aqua Regia. I'm making it for purpose, uh, because I know a lot of people from Europe, um, and I think it's the same in US, uh, so a lot of people will struggle to get any kind of nitric acid. But nitric acid, it can be successfully substituted uh, with any kind of its salts. And by saying its salts, I mean by any nitrate mix of absolutely any nitrate and hydrochloric acid it will make almost the same thing as a proper aqua regia not exactly the same but almost the same uh, well from practical point of view it will be just less reactive and uh, that's it no any other major differences so whatever applies to proper aqua regia it will apply to poor man's aqua regia as well Speaking about nitrate, you can use any nitrate, it will work to dissolve your gold, but I do not recommend using calcium nitrate. When it comes to calcium nitrate, if it gets mixed with sulfuric acid, it will make something called calcium sulfate, or in other words, gypsum. Gypsum is absolutely insoluble, and uh, also it's quite a pain to filter it. Also, myself, I'm trying to avoid ammonium nitrate. Uh, well, it's way too long story to explain why, but let's say I just don't like it. Right now I'm using magnesium nitrate. Not because I like it, um, not because I'm supposed to use it, but just because I got it cheap. So yes, I'm just mixing it with hydrochloric acid, and if it will be not enough, um, I just add a bit more of nitrate. Just waiting till all of nitrate dissolves, and um, then we will have a look how it goes. At this point, you do not have to apply it any heat, just wait. At first reaction, it will be exothermic, and it will produce quite a lot of heat itself. Even now it's winter time, but heating it straight away, it's a bit overkill. Just a couple of minutes later, you can see some bubbling. Another thing I did, I fixed my glove to the flask neck. Some people may think I'm kind of a freak uh, or maybe just bored, uh, but the reason for such a strange behavior is quite simple. You do not want to leave your aqua region open. Most of the gases produced, well, except of hydrogen, are the really useful gases. Both chlorine and nitrogen dioxide are actually the ones dissolving your gold or helping to dissolve your gold. So myself, I'd like to keep them in solution as much as I can. From another hand, you cannot seal your aqua region completely, because sooner or later so much pressure will build up, it will simply explode. Um, so yes, this is what I'm trying to do, to keep the gases in solution um, using really simple means. Again, no rush, whenever you see some bubbling, just leave it like that. If reaction stops and you can see, there are quite a lot to dissolve. At first, I recommend to add extra nitrate. And only after adding extra nitrate, you will apply some heat. Since my flask is really small, all I have to do is just put it into hot water. If all of a sudden you realize uh, that there is a hole in a glove and some kind of unpleasant gases start coming out, no panic, it's an easy fix. Uh, just put another end of glove into water and uh, also you can add a couple of drops of ammonia or any base to that water. 
What it will do, it will nicely neutralize chlorine and uh, also nitrogen dioxide. So your workplace will be times less smelly. Okay, this part it was done three days later. Not really I wanted or planned it that way, I just simply had another thing to do. During this time uh, everything dissolved, leaving just some dark grey black sediment. Aqua Ridge itself uh, changed its color from a tea color to kind of green. Uh, this tells me that Aqua Ridge successfully decomposed. Because tea color is quite native for Aqua Ridge. Speaking about sediment, so far I'm not certain what it is. Uh, it could be some silver, because silver is not dissolving in Aqua Ridge. Or it could be some absolute crap, or it even could be some carbon. Whenever you think it could be carbon, uh, you better be careful because uh, it may trap some gold. In any case, I just filter it out, do not discard, uh, but have a look later what it could be. Filtering. Well, you can use any filtration, including vacuum filtration. Myself, I'm just lazy to start setting it up. Uh, and here it comes, really nice and concentrated gold solution. When you filter, wash your bottle with initial aqua regia. Also, wash your filter as much as you can so no gold is lost.
Even I tried my best to wash it, uh, but trust me, tiny amount of gold is still trapped in a filter. I will not discard it, but just collect all these kind of filters and I will process them separately. Right, so for now everything is filtered and just because of filtration I diluted my aqua region at least twice. As a result, it went a bit misty. It could be anything, it could be silver chloride or it could be any base metal hydroxide. Um, right, here you just have to assess and to make up your mind if you want to filter it one more time or not. Right, I do not think extra filtration makes any sense. Not in my case. I rather try to wash gold sediment using ammonia. Ammonia, it will dissolve any silver chloride just fine. Okay, we are almost there. Remember, I told you anything that applies to aqua regia equally applies to poor man's aqua regia also. So, before final precipitation, we have to do one more thing. And what I mean, we have to neutralize any nitric acid. There are many ways of doing it. If you do board, um, you can boil it off, or you can use urea, or there is one more way of neutralizing it, and I will show it to you right now. Probably the most elegant way is to use sulfamic acid. Not sulfuric, but sulfamic. Just dissolve it in water and slowly start adding it to your aqua region. Immediately you should see some bubbling. Mainly it's a uh, nitrous oxide, so just keep adding it until no more bubbles. That's it. It took me less than 5 minutes to neutralize any nitric acid. And uh, finally, we should be ready for gold precipitation. This time I will use SMB. Okay, I'm a bit lazy to start checking the pH level and uh, so on, blah blah blah. Uh, but from my experience, I hope I did everything right and gold will precipitate just fine. How much of SMB you may need? Honestly, there is no certain answer. It all depends on too many factors. Myself, I would add anything between 1 to 1 of expected gold uh, or at most uh, 3 times more of expected gold. Anything less and you are in trouble. Anything more and you are in trouble again. So if you have no clue how much gold to expect, you better use iron sulfate and then you will have more stable results. Just dissolve S and B in water, leave it to stay for a couple of minutes and then start adding it to your aqua region in small portions.
here you can see some color change. Okay, let me allow you to see it a bit better. And this is what it takes to precipitate your gold using SMB. As you can see, it was almost immediate reaction without any hardcore sulfur dioxide gases. For now, just wait till it settles and filter your gold. This is how it settled just within two hours. But still, I will keep it for another day, just for any case, and I will filter it then. I hope you would find it useful, and thanks for watching.